Welcome to the Double D Podcast. I am Jorgen von Strangle. Welcome. Did I mention that I was the toughest fairy in the universe? All right, yo, that's, that's my bit for the day. Uh, so, guys, welcome to... Uh, Bang! Uh, <laughs> today's episode. All right, so let me get this straight. You Shut the married, fuck up, dude. You married your car. Yep. Now my son gets about 17 miles to the gallon. 17 miles to the gallon? That's actually pretty good. In modern standards, not too much. Because, like, you know, we have fucking Priuses that go for, like, 40 miles to the gallon. I'm sure that's what Cosmo was thinking when he put his cock in the back of an automobile, dude. I'm sure <laughs> that's what he was going hey, through hey, his hey, brain. Like, hey. yo, I, sh- I should have fucked a Prius. I should have fucked a Prius, man. What, what do you think a Prius, like the um, like the girl equivalent of a Prius would be? Would it just be like the sort of kind of like, I guess, very painfully average looking girl? No, I, oh, oh, what the woman looks like? Yeah, like the woman version of a Prius would look like. Oh, I thought you were probably talking about the woman version of a Prius car. Like what is, because yeah, women, yeah, lo- what... women already love cars. They fucking love cars. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, but I mean, a girl equivalent of a Lamborghini to, like, a Prius is, like, night and day, though. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm, like, wondering, like, what would... I don't know, I guess Prius girl, like Prius girls would be, like, the kind of sort of nerdy girls, maybe? Uh, assuming like, that I understand the analogy that you're trying to make right now between cars and actual sentient beings... Uh, okay, don't, no need to get philosophical on me, though, uh, yeah, David. So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, um... I don't know. I mean, there's Maserati. She's a porn star, so maybe there's that. I had a she's friend a porn once. star, but she I had quits. A friend who, but sure, I had a friend. That's who what was Maseratis are. Uh, I don't fucking know dick about cars, dude. I'm sorry. You should learn. I don't wanna. It's boring. I well, instead, I want to. Instead, I want to learn what the name of this <laughs> podcast is, and that's the Double D Experience, which is what you're listening to right now. Uh, <coughs> always, uh, sometimes not always funny. It's sometimes fucking shit. Uh, sometimes funny. <laughs> sometimes I forgot the fucking slogan for a second. Uh, sometimes funny, sometimes serious. <laughs> always off the cuff. Uh, we are your hosts, David and Dennis. Uh, there are a lot of comedy banter pad co- podcasts, pad, pad <laughs> that you can choose to listen to, but you chose to listen to this particular episode of Top Chef. So thank you so much <laughs> for for doing that. I appreciate that. Neither me nor Dennis are as hot as Padma Lakshmi, but she's a woman, so she's inherently hotter regardless. But in other news, Chris Pratt as Mario. <sighs> and cutting my life into uh, pieces. Uh, so opinions. this Mamma Mia is my last resort. <laughs> so I mean, since I... David is more invested into this universe than I am, <laughs> please give me your thoughts. I on... was crying <laughs> when I was watching I was watching that live with one of my coworkers, and she was just like dude are you okay I was shrieking in like the middle of a mall <laughs> like I was I was in a food court just yelling at the top of my lo- like this is- I'm not getting pranked right now this is real <clears throat> they chose Chris fucking pr- <laughs> to be Mario dude you go through the list of some of these at first and at first glance you're like what the fuck it just got worse and worse down the rabbit hole that I was mm-hmm. digging to try to get to China so I didn't have to see this fucking movie. Instead, mm-hmm. just force me to see whatever propaganda that they're going to do over there down in North Korea. I'd probably <laughs> rather watch that, <laughs> if I'm being honest. You know, the story of how, you know, like, Kim, Kim Jong-un personally walked up to, you know, like, the uh, the fucking Pentagon, like, sailed the seven seas to get to America, just so he could turn America's own nuclear system against itself, and the great, glorious like power of the great glorious democratic people's republic of korea yeah i'd rather i'd rather watch that movie i'd rather watch that if if they if they chose fucking chris pratt that is easily before we even get into the other ones we're in case well before we even get into this in case you don't know Recent Nintendo Direct came out. Really good mm-hmm. Direct. Yes. They announced a lot of good stuff. There's an open world fucking 3D Kirby game. And it doesn't even look like it's set in the same, like, normal green greenies looking world. It's, like, post-apocalyptic and everything. So there's, like, a story there. Like, I watched that trailer. I felt the Nintendo magic. As well as a bunch of other stuff that got announced. Mario Party Superstars. Still can't wait for that game. It's going to be so much fun with friends. But Miyamoto... <laughs> if you have friends. Miyamoto decided to come on to the, uh... The Nintendo version of what is, I guess, their Double D experience, if you would, <laughs> in that podcast. And uh, he announced the cast list for the uh, the soup, the upcoming Super Mario movie, which is being made by Illumination. They're the same people who made the uh, the Minions films. 
and whatnot. Mm. Uh, you, 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 am I cutting out at all? By no. the way, no. Okay, no, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a little. I'm just just being a little self conscious. I was looking at the meter on my, <coughs> on on my Untovash. but uh, <laughs> yeah. So no, they good, good. revealed the list for the upcoming Mario movie, and I was shrieking in the in the mall because I could not believe what I was seeing. I thought I was I thought I was gonna have to like take a look up at the camera or something, and like Johnny Knoxville was gonna come out and be like, "Yo, am I being punked? <laughs> uh, like, am I am I on fucking am I on like fucking like top pranks right now?" <laughs> But it wasn't just a prank, bro. They released the cast list for the Mario movie, and before we even get into the whole fucking cast, Chris Pratt is Mario. Star Lord, uh, Andy, Andy fucking Dwyer <laughs> is going to be Super Mario in the upcoming Mario film. I'm gonna get this out of the way right now. Oh, yeah, please, yeah. Go ahead. I think he, without a single trace of doubt in my mind, compared to every single actor on that casting list, the worst fucking choice. The worst. I, I, I can't see it. I just can't see it. Who knows? The movie could come out, right? Mm-hmm. And he could literally have the most, like, godlike fucking dead-on Mario impersonation mm-hmm. to, like, fucking, like, ever grace the airwaves. But knowing his, like, little... Knowing his typecast... It's like kind of not, and I'm gonna get into. I'm gonna do a little quick, uh, quick thing right now. There's some quick. other casting in here that I think is amazing, but you know, before we before we get to that, dude. I mean, mm. I, I mean, what do you think? I mean, me on Chris Pratt, or just the whole movie in general? Uh, whatever floats your boat. Uh, okay, I mean, I guess I'll start with Chris Pratt. Uh, I mean, I, I will say, and I, I guess a lot of people would be kind of disappointed in my take on this is that uh, it I mean same as David I didn't he would have not been at least my first choice he wouldn't have been for my that 10th. role it wouldn't have been my 10th either like it would have he would have not even been on like the top 50 really and it really makes me wonder like I really this is like one of the reasons why like I, I really wish um when casting is called out for uh for movies right um, I want to see the list of people that didn't get the part mm, because that's, that's never going to happen, but I, I know, I but it, why. I, I know, but it's like, you know, like the, the, just the sheer curiosity on like, uh, from certain cast choices, like the person that you picked. Right. And now I'm wondering like, who was the, like, who was like the second best guy you had on that entire roster of people that you just said, Nope, not going to choose him. But I'm going to pick this guy. Let's say in this example, obviously Chris Pratt, because mm. it really makes me wonder, like, because here's the thing about Chris Pratt. He's a wonderful, like, we're not taking nothing away from Chris Pratt right now. No. Like, I thought, I think Chris Pratt is, like, probably one of the few wholesome, like, genuinely wholesome, like, thing people in uh, in Hollywood currently. And I even think he's also just, like, genuinely a funny guy. He's even religious, and he's not even, like, obnoxious about it. Like, this guy is, like, wholesome across the board. Like, there, I have no problems with Chris Pratt. And for all you, like, mongoloids who, like, think, like, oh, you just hate him because he's, like, Chris Pratt. Like, no, like, dang, I-, I love Chris Pratt. Like, nothing wrong with the guy. I, I genuinely like him as, like, a as a Hollywood celebrity. As, as far as Hollywood, ho- as far as Hollywood celebrities go. But, and this is me going off of the 1993 movie that came out, like, obviously, way before any of you fucking idiots were born. Uh, oh, my God. I literally just A lot of our listeners are actually our age, dude. Uh, Bob Hoskin. Bob, <laughs> you Bob you ever Hoskins. take a look at our analytics? Bob Hoskin. No, of course not. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't read charts. Yeah, you uh, don't care Bob, about facts. Yeah, exactly. Bob Hoskins. Ooh, I mean, he, he was an English actor who played Mario in the uh, first um, uh, Super Mario movie that came out uh, many years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he... Looking pretty good right about now. Honestly, hey, what are we going to do, dig up his corpse? <laughs> he personally really, like, I thought, like, um, as far as casting went for that movie, uh, they got Mario right for that one, for sure. I thought Bob Hoskins, like, thing was really, like, a great casting choice yeah he made the he had the makings of a varsity athlete exactly and the thing is with chris pratt 
and again taking nothing away from him the guy could act so maybe like thing me and david are just being retarded and like think we're gonna be proven wrong when that trailer hits and we finally it, it, yeah, hear his the voice film's not out yet like, yeah you know so like that's why like you know we just this is our first initial thoughts so first like you know again take it easy over there all right like we i, I don't know i'm kind of just um I'd have to say, like, genuinely in my heart of hearts, I'm very neutral about this movie. Just because, like, it's... Uh, I even thought when uh, Detective Pikachu came out, all, like, a couple years back, and they casted Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu, I also thought that that was, like, you know, like, oh, like fucking really yeah. like i even i, I even remember thought, that actually yeah. a lot of people were pretty upset about that yeah which but in the end i was like oh okay like i was actually it was it didn't blow me away this movie but at the very least like i thought at you know this is nintendo's second attempt at making a live action film i mean i think this the super mario movie is going to be animated right Oh yeah, no, oh no, yeah, it's animated. Okay, if it okay. Was, yeah. Imagine if it was live. Oh action. god, yeah, they just give like Chris Pratt like a shitty like black colored <sighs> mustache to put on his face, like like hey, s- uh, yeah, slap this on. Wahoo, He's- motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> he just start, he starts dancing to like the fucking Guardians of the Galaxy like soundtrack, <laughs> like Mario Ooh, just like. Child, things are gonna get easier. <laughs> It's so dumb, man. It's just like Mario just like singing with his headphones in. He's like, come and get your love. <laughs> come and get the other love. He's like, come and get your love. It's just like Mario just like smashing like Goombas in the face. Oh, and, like, yeah. yeah. Come yeah, like, and get your love. <laughs> yeah, like nonchalantly. But hey, look. So going back wow. uh, real quick. At least to Detective Pikachu. I wasn't, again, blown away by that movie. But I at least thought like it didn't. Like Ryan Reynolds being in the movie didn't ruin it for me at the very least it didn't do that yeah i thought he was casted fine as far as the role was concerned and as far as the sort of character that he was gonna be it was perfectly fine so that's why i'm just kind of neutral right now with this movie in the sense that oh okay i mean ryan reynolds wasn't exactly the worst choice in the world or at least that's how it turned out to be maybe we'll be surprised by like fucking chris pratt david i'm honestly being serious about this I am, like, this may be one of the few times when, like, we would, like, I would be like, oh, David, let's go see this movie together. And, like, let's jot down our own thoughts and shit like that. And, like, you know, we'll put it on the podcast, like, afterwards. Because yeah. it's, like, this is Nintendo's third attempt now at making a movie licensed by them and everything. Because first one being was the 1993 one. And everyone knows how much of a, at least the box office failure that was. It's got a cult following now. The only good thing about that movie is that it has Daisy instead of Peach. Oh, my own. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. But, <laughs> but literally, like, again, we're reserving our real, like, th- like, again, this is just our gut feelings that we're all talking about right now. Like, as far as this film goes, I personally, because I, I kind of, I, I already have a feeling how this movie's gonna be kind of gonna go it'll be like at least like it won't be horrible because i mean uh, ev- no no this is the thing everyone they, thought the sonic no. film was gonna be terrible it was but, no it wasn't yeah it was. the thing is the people who went there knowing what to expect from this movie they got what they wanted and I expected they, to get arrested when i went to see the sonic movie because i went well to that's see on it you David. Myself, and there were like several <laughs> children around everywhere well, that's on you, dude. For a lot of other people, and I'm not speaking for most of them because I didn't even see this movie, but at the very least, I heard people say that it was fine. No one really went off and said it was fucking terrible. Everyone just said, yeah, it was okay. Like, they weren't like, I, the, like, look, the main gripe for that movie was that Sonic's eyes looked fucking weird. Once they changed that, they realized, okay, I'll give this movie a chance because then. They won't have to look at that horrific ass face of his it, for it the was entire genuinely hour. Genuinely nightmare fuel, yeah. And it's when I that feel bad trailer. for the animators who had to redo mm. everything for that, but it was it was necessary. It was as necessary. As far as like yeah. children's films go, I guess it was great. And can I can I say something as to that? Go ahead. Yeah, you know, some people will say it's too early to tell, but this seems like one of those things where the casting is so oh horribly obviously bad. 
where, like, it's just, like, it, it literally, when you go through, like, some of the cast list, which, you know, a lot of them are very different. You got, like, you know, you got Charlie Day as Luigi. You got Anya mm -hmm. Taylor-Joy as Peach. You got Jack Black as Bowser. Mm -hmm. All that stuff. We'll go through, like, we're going to go through every character as mm -hmm. it goes on. It literally feels like Nintendo Googled actors. <laughs> And, and they just found kind of <laughs> chose the ones that they wanted for each, just like out of a hat or something like that. Because mm -hmm. honest to God, like at first glance, Chris Pratt just seems like such a horrible choice because, and I'll say this as like a layman, you know, and I'm, I'm going right. to come off, I'm going to say this as unpretentiously as I possibly can, but a lot Hold of up. people, <clears throat> okay, go on. <laughs> but a lot of people really don't understand, um, every nuance when it comes to stuff like voice work for major motion pictures. There is sort of like a, and people were talking about this years ago, there was one actor, uh, it was Robin Williams, who actually said that like, when he was cast in Aladdin, mm -hmm. he was scared that that was going to set a precedent for Hollywood, that they were only going to start hiring like AAA stars to be in like animated films. Mm -hmm. And he was fucking right. That is what wound yeah. up happening later down the line. Nowadays, like, you know, it's like, it's, if your main goal is, like, a character voice actor is to get in major motion pictures, you might, you could still do it as background characters, occasionally as main characters and stuff. The girl who played Moana was a brand new actress who had never yeah. done anything mm -hmm. before. Like, she'd not done m very much, uh, at least, like, you know, stuff that hit the mainstream. You yeah. know, like, she, like, she, no one knew who she was, and she got a role working with fucking Dwayne Johnson. So it's like... That's, that, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible, but there is sort of, like, a little bit of a voiceover industrial complex for that. And that's sort of a whole mm -hmm. different discussion that I'm open to have later if you want. But y that that's one reason that people get, like, righteously mad on Twitter and they start virtue signaling immediately because they think, like, Oh, Chris Pratt only got casted because he's a major celebrity, blah, blah, blah. And I'm gonna tell you to grow up because that, unfortunately, is kind of how it works as far, like, sometimes, sometimes people get roles that they seemingly or sometimes do don't deserve based on their merit or they want AAA stars to be in here because they think it's going to bring in like the lowest common denominator the average consumer mm -hmm. into the film which it probably will you know and sometimes that works Ben Schwartz was amazing as Sonic he was perfect he was fucking perfect choice to play Sonic the Hedgehog in my oh that was opinion. Ben Schwartz oh fuck yeah oh alright he going, got going. casted as Sonic <laughs> Fucking hate, David. I, I I was like it, it, I was like my gears were turning in my head, and I was like, who the fuck was he? He sounds so familiar. And yo, then as soon as Dennis, uh, <laughs> I gotta ask you something. Can I, yo, can I kizzity crash at it, your place tonight? Because soon, technically as, I'm homeless. As soon as his image <laughs> popped up, like once the Google search like finished loading and his picture showed up, and you just started singing, I was like, oh, yeah, that's the motherfucker that got the oh, guy from Parks and Rec. This yeah. guy, <laughs> <laughs> he was perfect. But casting in that movie was perfect. Jim Carrey as Eggman was fucking incredible. Oh, yeah, that was the, the best choice they could have possibly. They literally realized. could not have chosen somebody yeah. better to play Doctor Robotnik, and I could well, go. I could go off on how perfect that was forever. But continuing on my point, mm -hmm. you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, people immediately think like "fuck Chris Pratt" like for this for the role because of the voiceover industrial complex, or they immediately like in my case think of his voice. Does that motherfucker sound anything like Mario or probably Charles Martinet? Or Charles Martinet, yeah. who was in the film as background characters for his legacy, which, you know, some mm -hmm. people some people think is shitty, some people think it's honorable, whatever, that's a whole different discussion. Mm -hmm. I, um... You, you, a lot of people think, like, just because the voice is not there that it's just bad casting, and that is not always true. And I think what we were just talking about, the Sonic movie, kind of proves that. Because mm -hmm. Jim Carrey doesn't, you know, sound like the traditional Eggman, but he was perfect for the role. Yeah. You know, Ben Schwartz has, like, a little bit of that, like, sonic energy to him. Like, that sort of, like, young, enthusiastic, I yeah, believe in talking. myself. I yeah. quick talking. I can do yeah. I can do anything voice. Sort of like that discount, like, main anime character voice, but more free-spirited <laughs> sounding. And he was perfect for that. If yeah. anything, I think I would like Ben Schwartz to be the voice of Sonic in the actual video games because he sounds a little younger than Roger Craig Smith. Even though Roger Craig Smith is wonderful as Sonic now, and he also fits the bill perfectly. Mm-hmm. Chris Pratt, at first glance, doesn't, and I still don't think he will. Who knows? He could surprise us with the best impression. But this is one thing you gotta remember, right? When it comes to voiceovers and when it comes to demo reels and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, there was this one that I heard where it was just like... This one guy, uh, it was like in some voiceover classes that I took, they showed us this uh, commercial demo reel or whatever where it's just like, Hi, my name is David Riverall, and this is my demo reel. And I was like, Ah, hello! 
My name is David Riverall, and this is my voiceover <laughs> demo reel. And the guy said the same. His whole like reel was the same sentence, but in like every fucking dialect you could think of, and they were all like spot on. And you would think immediately, oh, okay, this guy's a god. I'm never gonna be able to compete with him, whatever. But mm -hmm. a lot of casting directors that I've talked with, that I've taken a lot of classes with, told me like, yeah, that's great. It's an invaluable skill to be able to do all these impersonations, whatever, to be able to do all these dialects. But can you act? Yeah. That is what yeah. casting directors who actually choose the people to be in these movies actually care about. Yeah. You know, like, you, because like, like I said, Ben Schwartz sort of did his own spin on Sonic. Uh, Jim Carrey did his own spin on Eggman. It's not just about like, if you could fit the role perfectly, it's about what you, the individual actor brings to the role. All the mm -hmm. iconic stuff that you love, like Bugs Bunny or whatever, Daffy Duck, Mickey Mouse... That was somebody's, that was a piece of somebody's original personality that they brought to the table, and that's what makes people want to impersonate them. That's what makes them iconic, mm -hmm. you know? You don't get to be iconic by just doing an impression of something that already is iconic, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you, like, people become, like, become iconic when they originate voices for characters. Brock Sampson, Patrick Burton, nobody else could have done that role in the way that he did, and now that's how you think of Brock Sampson with that low voice. Same for Joe Swanson and all that kind of stuff. You see what I mean? So, I do still think Chris Pratt is not a good choice, but who knows? The movie's not out yet, and he could bring something unique from his own self and his own acting experience, because mm -hmm. he's a great actor, that could actually bring something new to the table for Mario. A mm -hmm. lot of pretentious-ass nerds get on Twitter and they think, this is the worst, this is trash, this is horrible, <laughs> just because they immediately think, oh, he doesn't have the voice for it. And you're right, he does. I'm not sure if he does have the voice for it, and that would make some mm -hmm. bad casting. But who knows, he could maybe still embody the actual spirit of Mario perfectly, and mm -hmm. that's what casting directors actually want. I'll cite a quick example here. And another, uh, as we move on here, is Jack Black as Bowser. <laughs> I do not give a single flying fuck what anybody says. That is perfect. Yeah. Fucking perfect The energy. Casting. Yes, like the energy thank you. alone was That's what I'm saying. Just exactly the first thing that I thought of. It's like they couldn't have picked a better guy that has that boisterous, almost just like loud and like almost like it demonic. almost give, yeah, demonic and even gives like you life when you hear him kind of voice than Jack Black, really. And even minusing out Bowser, like thing I re I even remember um uh that one movie School of Rock that came out like. Like, way, like a long time ago. And I remember watching that movie almost constantly. And the one thing that I always, like, loved about that movie was, like, obviously the music, of course. But, like, Jack Black gives... He doesn't really give himself too much credit when it comes to these kind of roles. But, like, he plays a serious role not too bad. He's a good... No, Jack a lot Black's a good actor. He's yeah, a like, good actor. A lot of times. Like, I even remember him being in that uh, Peter Jackson King Kong movie. Yeah, and I was, he was just like, thinking about. I was yeah. just thinking about that that we were talking and, about. Like that, yeah. that was another role that like he was kind of in the background for the most part for that movie. As you know, David, you remember, like he was just always kind of like following everyone around. I mean, this was technically his trip because like mm, you know, to came... beauty that killed the beast. <laughs> 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 but the thing is, though, his delivery of all his lines were at least like you know maybe a little bit more exactly. than fine. They were good. They were good, and that's why like it, it's like. You know, and who does uh, Jack Black play in uh, School of Rock? He plays a fucking down in the dumps, basically unemployed musician. And <laughs> I don't even like to think. I don't know how far uh, Jack Black ever went into, let's say, supposed music career. I think he did have a love for music, yeah, but like Tenacious D, his yeah. band. I know, but it's like we were even, just singing fucking tribute I, before I we know, started the call. But for him, I know, but for him though, it's like he even tells everyone else that I can't play a solo to save my life, and I will never will because he perfectly like he he's perfectly fine in admitting to anybody that. Like, yeah, I could, let's say, play a few notes, but I can't fucking play a solo to save my life. It's the reason why every time that there is a song that he sounds as if, like, in Tenacious D even, that, oh, he's gonna, like, be uh, playing a solo. He just fucking, like, you know, does the... Like, with his mouth. <laughs> like, he, he never plays it, period. And... So, Jack Black as Bowser, truthfully, amazing casting choice. He embodies the energy of Bowser so fucking well. Entirely. 
perfectionally, if anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, But no, I've had people argue with me where they're just like, God, no, that's the worst. Oh, you won't sound anything like him. And then I got ratioed on Twitter for it because obviously, you know, you get the other tweet that gets the most likes. They're right and you're wrong. No. No, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It, like he fits the energy better than anybody else. Mm-hmm. You did you like Eggman in the Sonic movie? Yes. Okay. Then you're probably not going to be able to say that you hated mm-hmm. Jack Black in this one unless he winds up being terrible in it or something like that. Because Jim Carrey didn't, you know, fucking. He doesn't sound exactly like Mike Pollock. He doesn't sound like him. No, you but know, same energy. It, it, yes. There is yeah. no one, no one else yeah. who could have fucking played Eggman. The- Literally, not a single mm-hmm. person could play a live action Eggman. And I think the same for Jack Black for mm-hmm. Bowser. His, he has the band experience in the background with dealing with, like, demon kind of stuff. He has that sort of, like, raw animal magnetism about him. And, and he's also got decent voice actor experience, too. Fucking oh, Kung yeah. Fu Panda. He's got the chops, really. Like, yeah. he, And the thing is, too, is, like, like, talking about energy, especially, like, when we talk about voice Whoa. actors, it's, like, once you're in that booth, like, they have, like, obviously the guys behind the glass telling you, hey, like, you know, okay, so we're going to be going through this line. Like, then go, like, you know, go and try it. And a lot of times, like, thing, it's like most voice actors, like, if they're very experienced, they're not always, at the very least, like, they're almost never just standing still delivering the line. They're, like, using all the body language they could possibly muster up. Almost as if, like, they, yeah, like, uh, pretending as if, like, the guy that they're um, playing is them and the guy that they're talking to or interacting with is right in front of them. They are pointing. They are crying. They are literally sometimes even like grabbing their face and just like pulling it down out of like fear or distress. Like they're literally doing all those things. And voice acting is very physical. Yeah. You don't more than people. There, you don't just stand yeah. there and read. It's not a lot. Yeah. Big difference more, between reading. You try to go into an audition mm-hmm. and you're reading. Oh, you're going to get memed on to shit as soon yeah. as you walk out of that room. They're going to fucking yeah. make fun of you. <laughs> yeah. And you're, you're, again, like, it's, I'd even think it's a, it's a bit more harder, I guess, than almost real acting. Just because, like, sometimes it's no, just you in the booth. True. No, but sometimes it's just you in the booth and you got nothing to work with. And you just literally have to have either whatever the, uh, the movie image that they have playing up, up on the back, up on the screen or it's just you in that room alone, and it's like, it, God forbid if it's like a long-ass monologue. No, no, no. Any any professional voiceover session isn't going to do that. You're going to be able to have the cast... You're going to be able to listen to the casting director, who's literally going to tell you. You usually do like one or three takes, be just like, Roar, I'm Bowser. Roar, I'm Bowser. It's like, Roar, all right, can we get like... I'm uh, Bowser. Yeah, can exactly. We go- can we go back to take two on that? It's yes, like, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, and they tell you which one they like best, or they'll tell you like, mm-hmm. oh, can you up the energy a little bit there? Oh, you're you're getting a little too close to the mic, Jack. Can you back up a bit? Like, no, like they're if the, if they they dude, when you plop a voice actor there by yourself, that's when you get fucking projects like Sonic Adventure, because that's what they did for the voice actors for that game, and that's why the voice acting in that game is as fucking terrible as it is. The actors were given no direction. Mm-hmm. That's why it was bad. Yeah, so yeah, that's any true. professional mm-hmm. voiceover session, no, you're not in there by yourself. And you're also reading your lines. You don't got to memorize them. But it's not reading. You still have to act. There's still yeah. so much more to the craft than anything. And that's why I think Jack Black, you know, maybe the voice won't be completely spot on or whatever. I mean, it's also Bowser. His voice is, like, edited because he's not a human. So like, Yeah, like, multiple. Uh, and like, his, and his so they do for South changed. Park. You know, like, I for know. all the kids, they up, they up the pitch, you know, like, to get them to sound like children. But for Bowser, too, it's like his voice has changed so many fucking times throughout the years. And it's <laughs> like, yeah, it's <laughs> like, literally, I think Jack. Junior, Black, I've got if, something <laughs> difficult to tell you about if, Princess Peach. If, I if know she's is, not really my mama. If that is the vibe that people are looking for, like the that kind of, let's say, Bowser vibe. Jack Black, in my p- honest opinion, is more than capable to delivering your stupid fucking dreams of whatever <laughs> it is or expectations you have of Bowser. Going back to Mario again, it's... <sighs> Chris Pratt has the chops. I don't know where he's at in terms of voice acting because I don't think I've heard him in too much shit. He was in the at Lego. Least... He, was the le- he was the main guy in the Lego movie. One movie. Yeah. Compared to Jack Black in the four, five, six different fucking Kung Fu Panda movies and whatever the fuck else he's been in. That's why I'm saying, like, I think at least, you know, he's, like, gonna be that uh, case of, like, he's very much still, like, not as act, 
not as an actor, but he's still very much, I feel, as if a newbie when it comes to voice acting. Because I think the people that are in there, even especially Jack Black, who isn't really known for his voice acting work, aside from Kung Fu Panda, he's got more experience than Chris Pratt, I feel. As far as that chops go, yeah. I mean, like I mentioned before, I still think Chris Pratt is... I mean, I think he's a great actor, but I still think... God damn, I still think he's not a good fucking choice at all for Mario. I really it, do think again, he's the worst casting. Still remains to be seen until we see the trailer. At least until we see how they did it, like how he did his yeah. voice. Like, you know, we don't know nothing yet. But really, David's more on the fence of like not really liking it too much. Me for me, it's kind of like just being real neutral about it personally. Just because it's like, you know, I kind of was surprised when Ryan Reynolds wasn't a fucking grading presence throughout the entire movie and uh oh he was also in onward Pikachu. chris pratt was also amazing in that movie and onward what was that movie that was it was a pixar movie that came out last year it's one about those two like brothers it's like themed off of like dungeons and dragons and stuff and they're, like, oh just going on, they're, right, like, right going on a quest mm-hmm. to like you know like uh get like uh get like a stone so they could like resurrect their father for a day yeah 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 no he was great in that movie and holy fuck was, was chris pratt the fucking perfect casting to like embody like this you know, like, sort of very mm. loving and caring, but at the same time, like, fucking loser, like, D&D nerd, like, to come <laughs> in. Like, a guy named Barley. Mm-hmm. He was, Chris Pratt was literally perfect for that role, not just even just because of his voice. Mm-hmm. He embodied the energy of that guy so well, because Chris Pratt, you know, we keep talking about Jack Black as well. Chris Pratt has a lot of Jack Black energy to him. That's yeah. literally, if you ever watch any episode of Parks and Rec, Andy Dwyer is literally a discount Jack Black <laughs> because the guy loves Jack Black so fucking much. <laughs> like he's like trying to be him so honestly no we're not dogging on chris pratt he's mm. a fucking phenomenal actor and if you don't think so then i don't know i guess that's just your opinion but kill yourself anyways uh, uh yeah moving little, on to- that's that's a little much but mario specifically it's just like meh but we've talked about this over and over again let's uh let's move on to the next one here uh get this one out of the way i guess um anya taylor um anya taylor joy as princess peach when i first saw the cast list i'm gonna be real no idea who this woman was i had no idea who this woman was and to really just let everybody know who she is real quick i mean i guess the most iconic thing that she's been in or the most notable thing is the queen's gambit she's the woman from the queen's gambit like yeah you remember like you remember the, mm. the show about chess the woman about that uh, chess player that like started bodying everybody but it's like but what but but she's <laughs> a woman she she doesn't have a, br- a brain <laughs> like you know it's uh that's what she's from. She has one movie that was animated in which she was the voice actor. And it was, believe it or not, the Playmobil movie. Which, if anyone, if nobody knows what the fuck Playmobil is, it is basically discount Legos. <laughs> so, this was Playmobil's Lego movie that they made in 2019. In which she played Maria Brenner. I don't know who that is. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, she's got one thing, I guess under her belt in regards to an animated film and being a voice actor other than that um looking through her filmography right now uh she's got a very naturally high-pitched voice which i mean that's perfect for peach if you like yeah. you know we want to talk about not just acting chops but the voice for it that's perfect dark you know cri- so there's the that dark crystal age of resistance that's another fantasy um animated film i think she was the voice of she, seems, she seems to have done like a lot of historical projects, which lets me know that she probably found her niche a couple of years ago, and like her agents yeah. just kept booking her for that. Which good for her. That's really yeah. how you got to like break through into the acting world. And, and then British trained actor actors and actresses, they're I, I don't want to say they're like a cut above the rest or whatever, but it's like they you can definitely tell like uh, sometimes if one's like uh, like British trained over there compared to over in Hollywood, mm. and uh. An essential British accent is, like, the number one thing to learn because an essential British accent is used mm-hmm. in, like, every single fucking project. You watch, like, the fucking, what's the movie, uh, uh, the movie version of, uh, Les Miserables. Yeah. That, mo- that movie's set in fucking France. <laughs> Everybody in that goddamn movie is, like, talking with, like, a British or, like, the little fucking cockney <laughs> British accent. It's set in fucking France. <laughs> But it doesn't matter because an essential British accent is now the history voice. Yeah. That's literally for what happens. Mm-hmm. For yeah. Romans, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for so Romans, too. That's yeah. another it's one. It's like, oh, Quintus. Fuckers. Quintus, bring me my gladius. That's not how I wish this, fucking talked. It's like, I wish to stab this slave. 
Oh my lord. Or like yeah, watching, no, it's, watching, yeah. a movie, watching a movie about when they fucking killed the czar. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's like, they should, they should be talking like this. Czar is dead. But, I go kill myself. Anastasia! I, <laughs> I don't know if you watched uh, The Death of Stalin. No. That movie, I honestly am so glad they didn't do this because it basically, obviously, you know, I've, from the title alone, you can kind of surmise as to like what it's about. It's basically about the events that take place yeah. after the death of Stalin. And we got fucking Steve Buscemi playing Nikita Khrushchev. <laughs> and he does not. I, I'm so glad they, did, they didn't do this. I am so glad they didn't fucking force all <laughs> hey, those guys. Hey, pierogies. Yeah, it's know? like, hey, yeah, yeah, let's uh, hey, hey, like, yeah, yeah, like, gabagool. Nobody talks in like a Russian accent throughout the entire movie. They got plenty of like Americans and also British guys like think playing their different roles in that movie. I am so happy. Yeah, Tom that Holland gets cast. Ca Tom Holland gets cast in American roles all the time. People forget he's British. The thing is too though, and I'm gonna say it again. British people can play an American character much more than Americans can play British characters. I will, I yeah. will say it forever and ever. I've Russell Crowe and the Nice Guys, man. Oh, Russell fuck. Russell Crowe and the Nice Guys. We have even uh, Benedict Cumberbatch playing plenty of American roles mm -hmm. in the States in Hollywood. And he is as British as they fucking get. <laughs> From his name to his voice. He is as British as they get, and he oh, plays oh, Americans fancy, rumply, pumply. so much better. He plays even fucking Doctor Strange. And Do and Tom Holland plays a kid who's supposed to be from Queens. And he's as British as they come to. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're we not can't even do just the, the opposite. They don't even just embody the character, man. I mean, those voices yeah. are spot on. Why, why isn't Tom Holland in this movie? Why isn't Benedict Cumberbatch in the Mario movie? Fucking dog shit. I, that would have been, been cool. But... I mean, again, that's Jim why I'm Carrey saying... Jim Carrey as Waluigi. If they get a sequel to this, if it does well enough... He could literally might... bend his face to look like Waluigi. <laughs> Just paint his nose pink and give him that, like, evil, dick dastardly ah. mustache. Oh, come on, fuck your venture. <laughs> no, kill he's to, kill he's starting yourself. To, he's starting to sound like Asshole. Monarch now. That, I, was, I was trying to sound like the Monarch. <laughs> <laughs> the Monarch, Waluigi, same person, bro. Come on. Okay, all right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's really weird because because uh, here's the thing. Even if I wasn't gonna watch this movie with David, I'm probably gonna go watch it anyway. Oh, I'm gonna go Just see it with. Uh, I'm gonna go see it with my friends too, and everything. We all we're all very big into movies. You're you're coming Excuse with me. us. All right. Cool. Yeah, they like to rent Sounds out cool. theaters and shit, so we're probably gonna wind up doing that. Poggers. Anyways, uh, I don't know. Like, it's just. Because I think also Nintendo knows that, like, it's... Because, like, after uh, Detective Pikachu did very well in the box office, they realized, like, oh, shit. Movies make money, too. <laughs> so we got to get in on this. Because, like, you yeah, know... Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. uh, Detective Pikachu basically told them that, oh, like, you know... Not only that, oh, we can make money off of movies, obviously. But other, also that the fact that, like, thing, oh, like... I like they finally like grew out of the ghost of the 1993 Super Mario movie because they never touched like they never even was thinking about another movie until Detective Pikachu. Like there was no Nintendo licensed movie after that, after the 1993 uh, Mario movie. That was like almost decades to that point of no Nintendo movie. And now they've realized, oh, okay, not only can it do well, but people actually like it. Mm -hmm. So let's go for the next IP, obviously, in their repertoire. After Mario, it really is just like Pokemon. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Whoever... No, I think a Metroid no. movie would be amazing. No, I know. No, but the thing is, though, too, is that, like, as far as, like, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't look at our channel's the analytics, so I'm about to go into Nintendo's analytics right now. I personally feel more people probably play Mario movies and Pokemon games. Oh, po po Mario movies. Mario games and Pokemon games more than anything else after that. Star yeah. Fox, I play that, but I know a lot of else, other people probably, at least um, a lot of modern day, let's say, Nintendo like uh, fans and players and gamers, they don't really know what the fuck Star Fox is. Which is kind of a shame, considering like Star Fox is fucking great, and I grew up with Star Fox sixty four, and I thought that game was fucking awesome. Which is and... getting re released again for the Switch for the millionth time. Hey, Star Fox sixty four <laughs> again. It's like literally it's... just them announcing we peaked in nineteen ninety fucking seven. 
it this really franchise. is it kind of like that nintendo direct when it, we we're talking about the switch online stuff with nintendo 64 and super nintendo i was just kind of like wow like is this basically your guys like confession letter <laughs> to like everybody <laughs> like saying like hey we kind of peaked the 1967 uh, 1997 so they peaked in 1967 <laughs> when they were running love hotels that's definitely when nintendo fucking but, peaked but like even like i even thought like uh, like zelda 2 <laughs> Zelda's also got like a big fan base, but it's nowhere near as big as either Pokemon or even Super Mario. It's just how it is. And kind of a shame too, because like I'd fucking love a Zelda movie. But I mean, Zelda's already fucking huge, so I mean Yeah. So I mean maybe it's in the works, who knows? If this yeah. movie does well, like maybe like we'll get uh, I don't know, Jack Black is Ganondorf or something. I don't fucking know. Like you mm. could probably play anybody. Why don't they just basically typecast like uh, Jack Black as all the Nintendo villains? No, oh, it's like all right, you're gonna be Bowser, you're gonna be Ganondorf, you're gonna be Andros. You're gonna- <laughs> you're gonna Watch be- my warlock punch <laughs> as it goes through your skull. Yeah. You know, Yo, could he be... could play a King DDD. Oh, I yeah, just dude. realized he could play a DDD if he wanted to. Uh, well, we do got some actual casted like voice uh, voice roles to go through right now. We're still not done okay, with yeah, the whole ahead. list. Uh, next up, main man Luigi, Charlie Day. Mm-hmm. And was not expecting Charlie Day, of all people, to be Luigi. Because when you think of the voice firsthand, it's just like, Whoa! <laughs> Does your cat make too much noise all the time? <laughs> like, my voice is a little sore. I can't get up there right now for Charlie Ugh. Day. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> voice, voice. you don't think of that matching immediately. Because Luigi's a little more, like, he's a little more down there. His voice is lower than, than Mario's and mm-hmm. stuff. It's like Luigi. That's like... Um, yeah, Luigi, lucky day. You know, like he's, he's just, like, a little <laughs> different there. And, uh... Kind of Waluigi-esque, if you would, but I mean, Charles Martinet voices literally all of them, so, you mm. know, I mean, there's going to be, be a, like, some slight similarities if you can dig enough deep for him. Mm. But as far as, I don't know about the voice, I don't think, I think that's going to be weird unless Chris Pratt can somehow get his voice higher pitched. It's going to sound, like, inauthentic to the games, which will probably suck. But as far as, like, the mm. actual embodiment of the character goes, like we're talking about, the thing that actually mm. makes you be able to at least put your own spin on the character, I think Charlie Day was a great choice for Luigi. Think mm-hmm. about it, like, the guy who's always in the shadow, like, the sort of more cowarding, like, insecure, not sure of himself brother, the guy who's in, like, the guy who looks up to his brother and loves him, and his brother loves him back, but he, like, feels, like, a little inferior to him in his shadow mm-hmm. and whatnot, feels like he needs to, like, prove himself, but he's too timid to know how to do that. I think mm-hmm. Charlie Day could play that effectively, because he's done that in a couple of movies, like, that one where mm-hmm. he had to fist fight Ice Cube or whatever. There's that. <laughs> he's also a little... He's also a little more timid, like, in, uh, what mm-hmm. is the movie? Like, the horrible bosses roles and stuff like that. Yeah. And, like, those movies. I-, I feel like Charlie Day actually has the repertoire to play, like, that sort of, like, more not sure of himself, insecure, like, cowardly type character, if you would. I think mm-hmm. that he can embody Luigi like that. But as far as the voice goes, I'm just like, ah, really? Oh, what the fuck is this? John Leguizamo blasts lack of diversity on Super Mario Brothers movie as Charlie Day takes the Luigi baton? There's no way you're angry that, like, a different like, person actually is, angry. is playing Luigi yeah. in the fucking movie. The, the shit came out in 1993 and it was trash. Shut the fuck up, John Leguizamo. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong though was honestly I so thought like Seth Rogen's Super got that Mario ape like Brothers is getting a reboot. Obviously, it's iconic enough, but too bad they went all white. Oh no, Latin. Oh god, did he really say? Ew, he said Latinx. Really? No Latinx in the leads. Oh, groundbreaking. Right. John Leguizamo. I'm reading a tweet. Uh, groundbreaking colorblind casting in the original. Plus, I'm the only one who knows how to make this movie work script wise. Okay, I'm pretty sure he was joking about that last part because he definitely knows that movie is shit. Like, he, he definitely knows that. John Leguizamo's a great actor. He's done a lot of better films, but... he I, I, Okay, whatever. I guess he's just mad that there's no Latin people. It, I, I, it's, a, it's voice work, dude. Y- you don't have to look like the fucking character. You know what I mean? And <laughs> Mario's also not... Uh, how do I say this? Uh, yeah, fucking Latin. He's Italian, <laughs> you stupid fucking... <laughs> but all right. You know what? You know, fine. He has every right to be mad. I'm pretty sure he's just salty. Like, hey, I don't get to be Luigi again. That's fine. You know, whatever. But uh, whatever. Would he yep. really want that role back? Though? No, really. No, he's. I, like, I, I, <laughs> it feels like a rele- it feels like a relevancy thing that he tweeted that. Yeah. If I'm being honest, but whatever. He's like, yeah, because he's like, you know, I mean, he, I don't know how irrele- irrelevant he is nowadays, but it's like he, he doesn't do too much. 
That's what I mean, though. It's probably like, oh, my God, like, you know, a Mario movie. I was in a Mario movie. I must talk about this because <laughs> I played Luigi. But uh, yeah. as uh, as I was saying, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. I honestly think... Whoa, 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 no whoa. Before you get into that, very quickly, very quickly, Charlie Day. Do, do you agree with what I said? Do you think you can embody oh, the yeah. character? Well? Oh, yeah. Okay, then whatever. I, I definitely agree with it. Uh, okay. I think definitely Charlie Day... Um, because he's not... Uh, Charlie Day even knows himself that I'm not, like, a main man material. But he's still a funny guy. So it's like, that's what he's got working for him. I honestly truly feel. Because he's not a bad actor either, really. Uh, the few, Try kitten mittens! Like, even when he's, like, in most... Most of his roles are, like, very much... Um, his best and most well-known roles, at least, that we know of... Um, are mostly comedy roles. Yeah, obviously, but, char- obviously Charlie, and it's always yeah. sunny in Philadelphia. That's yeah. where he. That's where he blew up, and that's why, like, I'm saying, as far as uh, like kind of um, his choice as Luigi, I'd say, um, and uh, again, I'm saying all this, and as like a non voice actor, I think it was probably more well done than let's say Chris Pratt as Mario. That's like just I, a I bit, agree. just I agree. a bit more uh like intelligent in the choice at least because because again again we're reserving true judgment until we see that trailer and we hear chris pratt's voice in the movie because we don't know nothing yet all we know is that just these people are going to be in the movie that's all we know but um yeah as far as all we all we know right now which is really not much charlie day yeah Good choice. Mm-hmm. Now, my fan, now finally moving on to Seth Rogen for the fucking 13th time nah. today. Uh, <laughs> no one can play... Banana Slammer, am I right? <laughs> Seth Rogen? There is no one, at least in my head, that I could think of right now who could play... I, I know Donkey Kong is not exactly a dumb ape, but like... <laughs> I screamed Seth, what the fuck at the top Seth... of my lungs. When I saw Seth, Seth Rogen. <laughs> Seth Rogen can, has that really, like, almost, like, sort of, like, dumb, like, like, kind of, you know, like, you know, vibe to him. That, like, <laughs> I, like, I was, like, and we've even heard Donkey Kong laugh like that, too. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I mean, like, okay, like, him as Donkey Kong, eh, fine, fuck it. Like, I honestly do wish, though, like, if this movie does do well, they would make another movie. And maybe bringing in more characters. We get the Wario Brothers as well. Almost like kind of a Danny uh, DeVito. Nintendo. Yeah, like, yeah, I, fuck it. Danny DeVito's Wario. And almost make it like a, uh, like a Nintendo like, kind of cinematic universe. I don't know. If, like, because uh, here's the thing, though, too, with the MCU when it first happened is that they realized that not only can we throw in all these characters in here. Because, like, the first Avengers movie was, they were not, they, a lot of them weren't really sure. If that movie was going to do well, period. Mm-hmm. They were honestly very scared when that movie came out. Because, like, if this fucks up, this ruins the entire MCU yeah. forever. And the thing is, is that, obviously, you know, to the contrary, we all know that this movie fucking literally clapped cheeks at the box office. Not only that, even reception-wise, people were fucking loving this movie. Literally almost stroking their fucking dicks just seeing all their favorite heroes. And clap like, cheeks. It literally and, owns the box office. Yeah. Made it its bitch almost. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, I'm not saying that this movie's going to be like the fucking first Avengers like kind of level of hype and stuff. Obviously not. But it's like, they. I, I honestly do feel, because um, if Nintendo weren't such pussies, and if they just kind of like <laughs> let like kind of their sh- like imagination just run wild and everything. Like, dude, can you imagine a fucking end game with Nintendo characters as a film? I don't even care if that movie was good, if if it would be good or not. Like, I would go nuts just seeing like Z- like like fucking Link and like an Zelda. actual like subspace emissary film. Yeah, literally. Yeah, dude, I would go hard. fucking nuts if if they made that movie. And I don't know. So this is basically just them. I I personally feel really tip like dipping their toes in the water. And see how well this movie could do. Just because, like, you know, this is Mario's second major motion picture. Because the first one sucked. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, like, you know, this is, they're, like, they're, uh, they're banking on money on this. They're hoping, they're, like, really hoping that not only it will give them back the money, but it also 
they're really hoping that oh okay if this is something like that the fans will really like or if like you know let's say after it finishes and you know it's released and people have watched it that oh my god people really like this movie like i would love them to just go ham with it like how they did with the mcu like i really would genuinely just kind of just love to see like where they go with it because I know Nintendo primarily is a video game company, right? Mm -hmm. But they could easily, if they wanted to, be an entertainment company. They really could. If this movie does great. They're trying. I mean, there's a theme park now. I I know. That's why I'm saying. Like, they're trying to be the next Disney. (laughs) They They already are the Disney of the video game world. That's already true. True. But at the same time, though, like, you know, Disney and nintendo in terms of scale i think are a bit different oh for sure not even a bit different because like you know disney has so many other um, yeah you said that a couple episodes ago i remember like they got so many other companies under their umbrella nintendo's got themselves and maybe a few others who knows but like you know um nintendo it being also a japan-based company is really hard for them to make an international presence that's like not in uh that's not just through themselves because Disney has a presence through several other different companies. Nintendo's got its own presence through, through its, its own presence through its own company. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I'm really hoping like, I, I'm minus the Chris Pratt thing. I really, truly hope that this movie does well, because if this leads to other Nintendo films, dude, can you imagine a fucking Star Fox movie? A Nintendo cinematic universe. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I, I know I say this a lot, but like, I think I'd be able to go to the stratosphere with how hard I'd nut. Like I could probably just lay on the ground point proven and just wait till I come. And it would just the sheer like magnitude of the velocity, (laughs) the force, the, the sheer magnitude of the force would just like propel me into the stars. Like, like a, a, a game and watch. (laughs) Movie. <laughs> God, mm-hmm. I'm imagining that. Come has been, come has been nutted, come has been nutted. We are clear so, for takeoff. So again, this is basically Nintendo's Iron Man movie, the very first one. This is basically them seeing, like, you know, okay, we'll see how the reception is, and then if we think that we got enough money in the bank to like then kind of uh, throw in for another one, then fuck it, we'll they throw have, in. For they another have enough one. money in the bank. I know, but this is the thing, though. Like, this is a Japanese company outsourcing to a obviously American-based production company to make this movie. So I don't know how much of a presence, I guess, let's say Nintendo will have had on this project. Again, guys, we're all all this is just hearsay. But um, it really makes me wonder if they had that one Nintendo like representative just standing in the background in the fucking voice in the voice booth and it's like. No, that's not how Mario sounds. <laughs> I told Chris Pratt, like, in his millionth take, do it again. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Dude, because Nintendo could do that if they really wanted to. They really can. They'd probably send multiple guys over to that fucking recording uh, booth and just be like... And, like, Miyamoto probably personally would tell told them, like, you make sure this fucker does it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you don't want to disappoint Mr. Miyamoto. Avoid or Nintendo. Do- yeah, yeah. What we do? Though. You don't want to get in Nintendo's bad books ever. <clears throat> Hold on. L- let me uh, let me let me do let me do something real quick. Let me uh, <laughs> let me get this going. <clears throat> this one's called Banana Slammer, bro. Because <laughs> if you take a hit of this, you'll go fucking bananas. <laughs> 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 and then, imagine, can you imagine all those Nintendo representatives love everyone else's role except Chris Pratt's? They like praise all these other actors except Chris Pratt just because be so like Chris Pratt's got funny. like it's got like so many big shoes to fill. But like you know, Jack Black is uh, Bowser. He like says like ha ha ha, and the guy and the one Japanese dude in the back's like oh yes, amazing, <laughs> like, wonderful cast. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, again, uh, I, re- I still remember the day a uh, long, a way long time ago when, like, um, people thought that a Zelda movie was going to come out. This was, like, way in, like, before 2010s and all that. So, like, I, I don't know. Maybe this will rekindle that whole, like, maybe uh, dream. Because it's, uh, it's only going to do that if it's good, though. That's what that's matters. The thing. That's, and yeah. it would have been better if they went with DreamWorks, which I wish they did, instead of the people who made the fucking Minion movie. 
but what and the emoji movie <laughs> you got to keep that in mind true these, pe- true, these people also true. made literally the worst animated film ever made besides probably like fritz the cat which if you don't know what fritz the cat is do not look it up trust me <laughs> and uh yeah so, I, I wish they went with DreamWorks, man, because if I heard that they mm. were like, this is like, oh, the same people who made Shrek are making the Mario movie, then I'd be a lot happier. I mean, Illumination, Would- it, like, the, I feel like Illumination in the, the, their film's general art styles is probably more, um, probably more accurate to Mario, I won't lie. Yeah, that's, like, that's what I thought, DreamWorks would look the same, yeah. but, like, DreamWorks movies are also just, um, how do I, uh, how do I say this? Better. <laughs> They're better than Illumination's <laughs> movies. Like, a lot fucking better than Illumination's. What do we got for Illumination? We have Minions. We have the Despicable Me films. We have Doctor S- the Dr. Seuss movies, the Lorax. Uh, we have Sing, which I heard was fucking terrible. <laughs> and that's it! That- that's it! That's literally- that's- that's literally all that we got going on here. These are the people that- and I'm not the only person who's saying this. I've watched videos and stuff, especially from Arlo, who's like, probably like my favorite Nintendo YouTuber. Pretty much one of the only big ones that I watched, the only- Oh, did he talk about this? Yeah, he lost- he tried to talk about it, but he was losing his mind. Like, when he was like, <laughs> actually like, going through the cast list. Like, the picture of Jack Black came up, and he just like, he had to take like, a fucking three minute break. He was laughing so hard. It was- <laughs> it was so joyous to watch. I'll- I'll send the video to you later, actually. You'll probably get a click okay. out of it, but, uh, yeah. So, it being made by Illumination... Makes uh, you kind of question it, don't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it really does. I mean, Minions is... Yeah, it's just very childlike, which I guess it's supposed to be, but it's so gimmicky. Mm. Despicable Me was a good film, I won't lie. Didn't see any of the sequels, because who cares? Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, and some other Dr. Seuss stuff, and that's literally it. Like, they don't have as big of, nearly as big of a repertoire as some of these other film studios that Nintendo could have hired. Who knows? Maybe they went to DreamWorks, and DreamWorks was like, give us, like, fucking $400 trillion or <laughs> something we want, like, like that. F- we want, like, 49% of your shares of stock. Uh, and we, we want to basically, own, like, practically own you guys, and Nintendo was like, eh, uh, no. No, and they probably went to Disney too. I'd like to Mr. imagine Mr. They Mr. Mi- Di- Mr. Miyamoto-san, could you come in? <laughs> I go yo Dakunisu. Hi, hi, Diego de Mas. Like he's just like, are we really fucking doing this? <laughs> it's like yeah, they, everyone just hears Japanese, but like in subtitles, it's like <sighs> these. It's like these people are fucking retarded. <laughs> 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 Like they're probably but then, then the Miyamoto's just like, oh, you Americans have such a big opinion. Big opinion. It's like, yeah, just like has his thumbs up, like, oh yeah, and then goes back to his like president, like, uh, sorry, I'm I'm being straight. I'm gonna be straight with you. Um, they're doing the Jap- Japanese equivalent of pretending as if we're a cute lolly girl and trying to fuck us in the ass. And <laughs> um, I, just, I don't know. Like I don't know. Like, I don't know better than like, bring. Let's bring in the aforementioned experts. He just brings in pink guy. <laughs> in the bags, like, I don't know. Pink. I don't know. Pink guy. Should uh, pink guy. Should we make this a film? Should we uh, let? Uh, should we let a rumination to make this? Can, can and he's just like. like <laughs> but it's like, and they're like, oh yes, hi, 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 hi. And then like the president stands up. He's like, I made the decision. Haira, uh, haira, chin chin. He's like. We are not going to go through with this movie with you. We will take our business elsewhere. <laughs> and they just like walk out like all like and they all bow before they leave. Like they all of them just like walk out that way. And I mean look, I'm I'm pretty sure like they whoever was the head of let's say um this movie, whatever their team or staff was and like um especially the directors and producers, whoever, they all probably did shop around. They shopped around everywhere. And obviously, there's no one, there's nowhere else they're gonna be shopping around for to uh, hire people to make a movie other than Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So they probably shopped around plenty. But I bet you, yeah, DreamWorks and also Disney, they wanted their cut and then some in those negotiations. I bet, like I bet, oh, a lot of those guys probably wait, were like, you know, we want our cut and then some. Wait a minute, I completely forgot about this. Mm. You talking about like the third venture for uh, Nintendo's film, right? For Nintendo's like film repertoire, like their like their film adaptations. Let's try their third. Fi- I forgot about this movie. I totally forgot about this movie. Let's try their third film adaptation for Mario, specifically. 
There was a Mario movie before the live action Super Mario Brothers film. There was an anime Ooh. film. I forgot about the anime. I completely forgot That's about the right, anime film. Right. That movie was oh man. It's a really short runtime though. I think it might have been like made for TV or something. It's only 60 yeah, minutes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like still, it's called Super Mario Brothers, the great mission to rescue Princess Peach. Dude. Oh, man. I've actually never seen this movie, but I've heard about it. There's actually, like, I think one of Luigi's outfits in Smash Brothers is actually modeled off of how he looks in that movie. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I completely fucking forgot about this film. Oh, I gotta find a way to see it. But, uh, yeah. I, I guess before we, we can, we'll get mm. a little more into the, uh, we'll get a little more into that ho probably hilarious board meeting. Uh, <laughs> later. <laughs> we got just a couple of more quick ones here. Keegan-Michael yeah, yeah. Key as Toad. I think yes. that's great. Because one, he looks like him. He better scream. Yeah, one, he, he fucking looks like Toad. Which is hilarious, because he's bald. Mm -hmm. And I think that's already <laughs> funny enough. Three, uh, t three, oh my god, I can fucking count. Two. He, <laughs> two, he definitely embodies, like, that Toad energy. Keegan-Michael Key, besides some TV shows, was never really the main guy either. So, being, like, that sort of, like, like, sort of comic relief sidekick... Mm -hmm. That's already perfect for him because he's a hilarious true. fucking comedian regardless. And he's, he, as far as the voice goes, he can already get his voice pretty up there. He's done it a couple times. So if I'm being honest, I don't even just think he's going to do this. I think he's going to do the voice. I mean, like you, you just said that you hope like you're like, he better fucking do the voice. Knowing him, I have a feeling he will. I, I think he can embody that energy. Like I remember like the sort of high spirited guy that he played the boyfriend of Donna in uh, Parks and Rec. And he he really embodied that energy really well of that sort of like positive force going around like I'm just I'm just here to help you know like he can <laughs> I I think that was really good choice and I I'm having a hard time describing how people are gonna see it yet but honestly I think he's gonna low key be like one of the better one of the best cast choices in that film so far just from I, my I personal be, take I, I I do agree and I even I'll even say this like I'll be completely fine if he just has his regular voice. But if he screams, he screams like Toad. Yeah. Like, if he's like, he's just like, yeah, yeah. It's like, ah! it's like, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, it's like, it's like if, if it's like that, like, I'd be perfectly fine with it. He just has to do the Toad scream at least once in the fucking movie. That's all he's got to do. Oh, this he's got the lowest bar this out of everybody. Yeah, he does. But I just, this movie's being directed by the creators of Teen Titans Go. I didn't know that. You know, if this movie makes fun of itself and, like, makes fun of, like, Nintendo, it, like, I'm really wondering, like, if it does do something like that, I would appreciate this movie ten times more just because, like, I don't know, Nintendo's not one of those companies that makes fun of itself. No, if anything, they're so overly protective of themselves to the point yeah. where they shut down fan mods of games from tournaments for games that they can't even exactly. sell anymore so. because they're scared that that's going to, like, that they're scared that's going to, like, not only hurt sales of, like, the new Smash Brothers game, but also, like, make their image look bad or, like, their intellectual property look bad when the only thing that's making people hate them in the first place is them shutting down those tournaments. Yeah. So as far as that decision-making goes, Nintendo's kind of ass-backwards as far as that goes. But what going off of what you said... Mm -hmm. wholeheartedly god i hope so because those little tidbits are really the kind of stuff that really makes video game movies great in the first place yes. and that's why a lot of video game movies are not good because they don't do that they try to be too legit and they insist upon themselves whereas a lot of other oh, ones yeah. make fun of themselves like i hear them i didn't see the mortal kombat movie but i heard that movie was like fairly self-aware the sonic mm -hmm. the fucking hedgehog movie oh my god I, I think it was such a good children's film i still don't think it was a good movie overall but that mm -hmm. movie doesn't just make fun of Sonic, it makes fun of Mario. <laughs> Seriously, like, there's a scene in that film, with spoilers for the Sonic movie, where Sonic is, he has to keep a ring, like, uh, in case he needs to teleport to another universe, and he doesn't yeah. want to, because he's happy where he is. The only other universe he has left to go to is, like, a mushroom world that's made entirely out of mushrooms. And he's like, ah, but I don't want to do that, because mushrooms are disgusting. <laughs> Like, that, that was a dig at Mario. Like, it, it was a dig at Mario straight up, and I think it went over a lot of people's heads. But, uh, whatever. So, if the movie's self-aware like this, that would be, that would be good. But, that uh, would That would really, like, kind of, um, make me, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, yeah, we shouldn't exist. But we do. <laughs> like, I'd even want, like, a moment where, like, even Bowser's just like, what the f- Like, <laughs> like, Peach is like, it's like, oh no, dude. Like, she thinks he's gonna, like, rape her or something but you know Bowser's like like Bowser's like almost offended it's mm, like come here to me princess it's, it's like 
Or like Jack Black actually goes to like his offended voice and is just like, I know Jack Black would never say this, but it's like, bitch, like what? Like what? You thought I brought you to ew? <laughs> ew. <laughs> like you know, Beach was like, what? Like you know, I thought that's why you brought me over here. Like even she's like, oh, like I'm the idiot. Like Jack Black's like, no, I didn't. What? The bitch, I'm a Cooper. It's like. I brought you here to babysit my kids. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, the guy, I didn't bring you here to... Oh, ew. What? I have, like, eight kids. It's like... Like, I can't take care of them by myself. Like, what do you think? I got a, I got a kingdom to run. Oh, like Lord. you. But apparently, you don't do anything in your kingdom. You just always let yourself be kidnapped. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I would love it if they just bring, like, all the Mario jokes that we've made for the last fucking 15 years. If they... <laughs> if they like... Yo, if they use these at, in the script... I will love this movie because I I honestly was very protective back in the day with like a lot of the stuff that I liked, but I realized that you truly love it when you can make fun of it. That is the key to comedy, my friend. That is to the, not yeah, be afraid really, to make fun of yourself. That is a direct quote from George Lopez, who was pretty oh, fucking funny. Heck. Yeah, so yeah, pretty, I, yeah, I can, he's a yeah. funny. He's a funny looking. He's a funny looking Mexican. He, he, he's man, one but, funny Mexican. Uh, he's the last of the Mexicans. <laughs> he is the last of the Mexicans. <laughs> so, I mean, Nintendo, again, this whole movie. I don't know how much money you're banking on it. I don't even know how much you guys threw into it uh, as far as budget goes. But yeah. It's, um... I don't know. I I really do want this movie to succeed just because of what we may get afterwards. Because if Nintendo realizes that, holy shit, we made bank and then some. Wait, wait, up, 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 up. Future. In May 2021, Nintendo president uh, Shuntaro Furukawa announced their intention to produce more animated films with other Nintendo IP in the yes! event in the event that the Mario film is successful. That's what it says on the uh, on the movie am. page. That's why. So holy. That's so, why. Yep, yeah, Dennis, you were you were fucking completely is, super duper Omega birth of booty spot on correct. This is their Iron Man. This is their 2008 Iron Man. Oh man. This is going to lead to the Thors. This oh, is going to lead to the Captain the, America. Guys, please see the Mario movie. Please. We need, <laughs> seriously, just imagine a Metroid. Imagine a Metroid movie. A Metroid movie, movie. so fucking good. Probably better than a movie. Mario movie, if I'm being honest. Dude, uh, can you imagine a like Metroid and Star Fox crossover movie? Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of like Dennis, how Thor, Dennis, uh, Dennis, Dennis, ca- Dennis. Kind of like how Thor and Guardians of the Galaxy is going to have their own like kind of combined movie now. So it's like, Dennis, dude, like Dennis. Samus in her ship. And Star Fox and gang, fucking dog fighting, like, Dennis. and even just them fighting, like, bro. My Dennis, my fucking oh. dick. Shut up. My fucking dick can only <laughs> get so erect. I'm hitting the bottom I, of my desk right now, even, dude. Dude, even just like a like a Zelda movie, just and a Zelda movie too. That would also fuck. be phenomenal. Fuck. I would love a Zelda movie if it was silent. I would love a silent film for Zelda. Not like silent as in like, not like silent as in like, like ragtime, but fucking silent. Link should be, um, like silent. I think that's one of the reasons why people love him as a protagonist, because he doesn't fucking talk. Which, like, I mean, it's kind of terrible to say, but it's like, does Link sound like as if he's got anything intelligent to say half the time? He sounds like he has no balls, is what he has, because of how much he screams, even though his sack is bigger than... Literally everyone else's. Like, I feel as if, like, in Link's origin story movie, which, I mean, I think all these characters may be which getting That's already own, complicated enough in itself with Zelda I, I lore. Know. I mean, but, like, think they could probably make, like, this cinematic universe could be its own thing if they wanted to. If Nintendo really wasn't so much of a fucking pussies, like, think they could literally have this, perhaps, in time, rival the MCU. Because no one knows fucking Marvel characters, like... Everyone knows Marvel characters. Everyone and their mothers know Mario characters. Especially, obviously, Super Mario. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, thing, like, they, dude, I'm hoping that this does so fucking well. Considering I really hope. some of the other characters that are in it is, I guess we'll wrap up the, uh, wrap mm-hmm. up the, uh, character list here, the mm-hmm. voice cast, because there's still about three more real quick. Mm-hmm. Fred Armisen is in this film, you know, from Saturday Night Live, you know, Fred Armisen, mm-hmm. we've seen him before. As Cranky. As yep. Cranky. Which, why is Cranky in this movie? I don't under- Yoshi is supposedly not in this film. There's no cast list for Yoshi yet. 
Which or, is pretty shit. Which, I mean, hey, maybe Yoshi literally just doesn't have a voice actor. Maybe Yoshi's in the film and they just, like, like include some of his sounds and shit and they just don't have <laughs> Yeah, Chris Pratt's him. dog plays Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, because it's, I, I think it's already weird enough that, I think it's already weird enough that DK is in this film, but Yoshi's not. Can you imagine if, like, Cranky Kong's, like, Nick Fury of this movie? Yeah, like, with the yeah, eye like, patch and everything walking like, around Cranky, the Cranky would definitely be, like, that guy that would be, like, he's like, yeah. <laughs> I only, I only remember his one voice from the animated series from way back when. It's like... Ah, you think you're the only ones living here? You don't know nothing. <laughs> Yo, isn't that when like fucking um? Isn't that when like when fucking um, Gilbert Godfrey played him? Did he really? I'm pretty sure it was Gilbert Godfrey. Was or, that really him? Or was, I remember or the animated it, series. Or was it Discount Gilbert Godfrey? Yeah. I think it might have been a Discount Gilbert Godfrey because the voice was a little lower. Hello, everybody. <laughs> No, he was a lot more high pitched. Boy, oh boy, could I go for some bananas? Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I guess Cranky Kong might be the Cranky Kong is either going to be the Herald or more likely he's going to see like more of a side character. He's going to be in one scene and he's just going to hit DK and Mario over the head and be like, "Back in my <laughs> day, we didn't have these all fancy." Th I think that's literally all Cranky's going to do in this movie because otherwise, why the fuck is he in it? That's so weird. Like he, that's such a weird fucking character to be in the film. Can, can you imagine though? It's like he he pretends he's like that, but then like once people know, when no one really realizes it, he like stands up, like actually like able to stand up without any trouble, and they're like, oh fuck, like oh Cranky Kong's got, oh shit, like and like they realize that Cranky Kong actually like lifts too. It's yeah. like Cranky Kong's like fucking ripped, and he's like, oh do you think Todd DK? Mm. <laughs> this is hype though. This next one, uh, they got Kevin Michael Richardson. As Kamek. As Kamek. Which, mm -hmm. Kamek, I feel like Kamek has more of a place in this movie than fucking Cranky, but I don't know. You know, Kamek is, I mean, Kamek's a little bit, now, if you know Mario, you know Kamek. I, I'm yeah, not, I'm not exactly. gonna say that, yeah. Um, you saw him in Paper Mario too. So yeah, 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 of course, of course. Too. And this guy, I mean, you know, he's got the fucking repertoire, man. He was Gontu in Lilo and Stitch. He was Goro in Mortal Kombat. He was in Rugrats in Paris. Even Recess he was in. He's got the he he a fucking huge-ass voiceover repertoire. Did some other voices in General uh, Aguila in uh, TMNT. Uh, he, was in, he, he was the Gator in The Princess and the Frog. Fucking eh. Yeah, he's got a hell of an extension. So uh, apparently, he's more known for like, like sort of those um, d a distinctively deep voice and like villainous characters and mm -hmm. stuff. So he's playing a villainous character, but Kamek doesn't have a deep voice naturally. He he more so is like, uh, how, how does he even, how does he even Kamek? I always thought he sounds like real nerdy. He does. Yeah, ex that's the yeah. thing. He he does sound real nerdy, like bah, 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 like a little Gruntilda like, but like yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sound he sounds like a male Gruntilda. That's the best way to describe Kamek. That's basically what he sounds like. He sounds like a male Gruntilda. Mm. So I mean I don't know it's Kevin Michael Richardson he can do anything so I'm not I'm not too worried about that and, and then, then for our final one I cannot believe this one Sebastian Maniscalco is in the fucking Mario movie <laughs> <laughs> This is the one This is the one Just what the fuck Why is Sebastian Maniscalco very very funny comedian blew up a couple of years ago Mhm mm uh, my, my family got him, uh, my family got him in, uh, my, and my extended family is who, uh, got us in, uh, into him. Very he's funny, a like, Italian, Italian. Yeah, and he's a fucking Italian, so he's got, like, that sort of, like, diction in his, like, comedy. Mm. He is going to play Foreman Spike, which I'm sure a lot of you, like, Mario fans, if you're not, like, diehard Mario fans or you're just very young, if you don't know who Foreman Spike is, I don't fucking blame you. He's been in one Mario game. Way, way, way back in the day for the NES, and that was Wrecking Crew, which was a sort of demolition game. You played as Mario, and, uh, you played as Mario and Luigi, and you're the mini game there. Like the uh, the goal of that game was to just bash in, avoid enemies while like bashing in walls, right? To try to get mm. like to, to try to like demolish a building. That was like sort of Mario's Carpenter days, if you would, before mm. he got sucked into that magical toilet and suddenly had to save <laughs> like you know this lady every time she got done kidnapped. <clears throat> Foreman Spike is apparently a character in this film. Nintendo has not ever in a game they haven't touched this guy in forever. No, in a game, let alone a fucking feature film, brought back this character for anything. <laughs> and he's not only in the Super Mario movie, he's being voiced by Sebastian Maniscalco. Dude, I don't think they could have gotten anyone better, really. I wholeheartedly agree with that, and if I had to guess if Foreman Spike is in this film, Considering that most video game movies do this, 
I think this is gonna be an origin story. I think he's gonna be Mario's boss at like the beginning of the film or some shit. You like, really think so? Yeah, huh? yeah. His boss. So at this the really is. It's just like Iron Man. Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're ne- you're never gonna be a hero, Mario. <laughs> yeah, you're never gonna do shit with your life. Can- oh, can you imagine? It's yeah. like he meets Princess Peach, but like you know, she like let's say uh, passes by them one day, and mm-hmm. it's just like ah. Oh. And Foreman Spike says, "What the fuck you looking at?" <laughs> it's like, oh, you think you're gonna go get her? Go get her. Yeah, go, yeah. <laughs> go, do it. go do it, do it. I fucking dare you. Go. I fucking dare you. You fucking think this bitch is in your league, you fat Italian cuck? Huh? It's Luigi, why don't you go grab your brother's balls? I, I think he's somewhere around here. You gotta go find him. <laughs> so I mean, they, I don't know. They could otherwise. Uh, they could've, what they've the fuck? Really, I mean, Foreman Spike really, was like the mm. enemy of Wrecking Crew as well. You had to mm. avoid him. He was like the villain of that game. Sort of. So, I mean, that's that's my guess. Otherwise, I can't see what the hell this if character is going to do. There's never even been, like, a 3D or... model of this guy. He has an 8-bit sprite, oh, and that's yeah. it. I'm looking at the uh, Mario wiki right now. Yeah, they only... Yeah, literally. Just got 2D sprites Which, of fun him fact, and art. Yeah, and artwork. And fun fact, the mm. artwork there with the brown and... Uh, the brown and... or uh, The brown overalls and hat and the white shirt. That is what Mario's black and white alt in Smash Brothers is based off of. Oh. It's based off of, it's been based off of this guy ever since, like, the first Smash Brothers game. It's based off of Foreman Spike from Ray. Yeah, all the alternate costumes, and I could send you some videos on it if you're interested enough. All, like, almost hmm. all the alternate costumes in Smash are references to shit. They're all based off of shit, mm. which is really cool, especially Mario's outfits, which are pretty awesome. So, yeah, Foreman Spike, here's the dude. I, I think he was in one other game when they, like, re they did, like, a re-release of Wrecking Crew, I think, for the Game mm-hmm. & Watch, uh, for the Game & Watch collections. Or something like mm. that, but other than that, no, they have not used this guy like for anything, and he's in the movie, and Yoshi's not. David, yeah, David, I want a Marvel movie styled post-credit scene in this movie. If they have that, I'm gonna be real with you. If they really have that, and we're gonna get, we're gonna wrap this up, guys. If they have this, they if they have that post-credit scene. Let's say hinting at a Yoshi egg or something fucking else, whatever. Maybe even like, you know, it's like this, they're, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, I, I, I just imagine this. It's like Foreman Spike, like in his, uh, in his, um, let's say his office, right? And like, he's like, you know, come in. And it's just like these two shadows that we see come in. And it's literally Waluigi's and Wario's shadow. If they Danny DeVito do, and Jim Carrey. If they do that. David, I'm being serious. I'm gonna literally lose my shit because that would just basically give me validation mm-hmm. in that Nintendo's really planning on making this into a fucking Nintendo's cinematic universe. And not only that, because you guys don't know him like I do, but Waluigi is Dennis's spirit animal. It really is. That like, what that is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> Jim Carrey could literally look like him. I, I just sent you this amazing picture, by the way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll put this Dude. one on screen right now for you guys to see at home. Oh it's just God. a picture of Sebastian Maniscalco next to a fan art of Foreman and Spike. And Dude. fucking A. Could, it's like... So, guys, uh, closing thoughts from at least uh, just me right now. Dave, you can give yours afterwards. Um, uh, last, I... Lastly, lastly, mm-hmm. Charles Martinet will also be voicing some characters in this film. He's going to appear in surprise. Of course he is. He's going to appear in surprise. Yeah. And some people are pissed that he's not playing the character and that's where that he's not playing Mario. Even though, like, he's the guy who originated the character role in the first place and, you know, uh, whatnot. And they're really also imagine? mad about, like, the voiceover industrial complex. But I already know what you're going to say, Dennis. Go ahead. I mean, Tr- Charles Martinet is as memorable as they come. But I don't know nothing about his voice, like, serious voiceover work. Oh, no, that's not what that's not what I thought you were going to say at all. I, no, he's, not- he's got, he's got like, I, like, actual, like in uh, live acting chops and everything but like uh, the thing I was gonna say is like you know it's a very common practice to like have like there be like cameo in there like when they have somebody else take it over like in the Star Trek movies what's his name mm-hmm. uh Leonard Nimoy was in that movie and he played like the old Spock and then there was also a new young actor playing Spock that's what happens when there's usually a film adaptation of something iconic they get mad when it's not the original one like dude Mr. T was literally mad when he wasn't B.A. Baracus in the A-Team remake it's like it's a, it's a remake. It's supposed to be like new actors mm. that are doing this stuff. That's the whole like point. Yeah. It's like it's actually a very common practice. So, not only that, but can you imagine Mario speaking like full-on sentences? 
like that. I mean, I, I can, yeah. but like at the same time, it's like bleh. It's just, dude, I'm, it would take me out of the scene if it was serious in, immediately. Really fuck up the immersion. It's like I don't know. Like, what is it? What is gonna happen here? Is like Daisy gonna be a cameo and be like, hey, it was Charles Martinet. We got Charles Martinet to be Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Put you put they put him in. It's like yeah, we got Miyamoto's wife. Uh, she she's a yeah whatever. Anyways yeah. Uh, Daisy's in this fucking film. Oh, that, no, that's not gonna happen. But if Daisy's in this film, that would make me so happy. That's my girl. That's, that's my why I like girl right there. I, I want more movies if they fucking do this. And if it takes off, then fuck yeah, let's make more. Mar oh, basically, I'm gonna. I kept saying Marvel movies. Let's make more Nintendo <laughs> movies. <laughs> David, end game scene with the portals. And instead of Avengers coming out, it's literally Nintendo characters. I'm nutting. I am nutting. Who would be their Thanos then? Like Master Hand? Uh, probably. Either Master Hand or like Taboo. Hmm. Oh god, can you imagine? It's like Taboo like, doing the whole uh, the Infinity Glove scene where it's like, fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> it's just like, it's like a smash ball or something. Oh, Lord. I this is one of, like, it's so rare. Like, I haven't been, like, um, I guess excited like this. Just because, like, it's also, like, you know, we haven't seen a Mario movie since the fucking, you know, 1993 movie. So, like, dude, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this does well commercially and also, like, reception-wise. Because here's the thing, though, too. If you, like, the moment that trailer hits, there's going to be a fuck ton of memes. There's going to be a metric fuck ton of memes when that trailer hits. And, dude, memes also, like, low-key, that's, like, your free form of advertising of the movie almost. If they like it. Because, like, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, when the Sonic movie came out, like, I wasn't too much well aware of that movie. But, like, I'm pretty sure, like, there were plenty of memes that basically came up after that movie uh, trailer got uh, dropped mm -hmm. on YouTube. And one being obviously Sonic's really terrifying looking eyes uh, <laughs> before they changed it. Um, so closing thoughts, at least for me, I really hope I'm hoping like this movie like takes maybe it won't take people by the balls, but like grab them by the balls. It's uh I want to do, do I want it to do well because like if this does well then we're going to get more Nintendo movies. We might even fucking get a Kirby movie. Like can you imagine Antonio Banderas playing fucking Meta Knight? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> oh shit, that would be perfect. Like I still remember Kirby right back at you and how they got like a very obviously like, you know, Spanish sounding guy to play Meta Knight. They even had like the Spanish guitar playing whenever mm -hmm. he talked. So I he mean, has dude, transformed into fire. What Kirby. the god? <laughs> and I would love to see uh, oh. who's the most like squeaky, high pitch, like, like voice, voice, uh, like, like a triple A celebrity that I can think of. Uh. Oh, Marty maybe, maybe no, not it. Oh. Marty McFly. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 what was his name? Well, I would say probably the actress from Wicked. Adina uh, Menzel. No, not Adina Menzel. That's from Frozen. Uh, wasn't she also in Wicked? Mm, I think she was. No, like the woman who played like the 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 good witch, like the good witch of the North or whatever. Uh, I forget. Like she's it? a very famous. Like, hold on a second. Yeah. I forgot her name. Wicked. I remember the Wicked Witch of the West was also a cunt, wasn't she? Because I, 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 I know that the East Witch, like, got a lot of shit, but, like, apparently it was caused by this one in particular. Yeah, like, the one who played, like, Glenda yeah. the Witch or whatever. I, what is her fucking... Mm. Uh, hold up. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna look up Wicked Original Cast because I can't remember... I can't remember her fucking name. Kristen, oh Kristen Chenoweth. Kristen Chenoweth. That's the one. Uh, she has a very okay. like super duper squeaky high pitched voice, so maybe she could be Kirby. I don't know, but we we could t we could talk about this forever. We've already gone on too long. All right, yeah, we so, we got through the guys, whole cast list, yeah. So basically, and went through the whole cast list and then some with this movie, because yeah. like again, we may get an not an MCU, <laughs> but an NCU and the NCU. <laughs> so again, that's what I'm hoping on, just because like you know. 
I, it was my dream for so many years to see like a Zelda movie, and if this movie does well, and if I get that, then fuck yeah, like I hope it yeah. does well. Hey guys, give and Dennis his give Dennis give Dennis his Zelda movie, please. I've been waiting twenty seven years for it. Like you know, please, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we, we know you got the money. Hey, like please. You're not gonna. And, oh, go ahead. Okay, and also, uh, if you guys make a Nintendo Endgame, it'll make me die a very happy man. So, you know, please. Hey. Like, please do it. They're going to make more Metroid games because you can't even order Metroid Dread on Amazon right now. What the fuck? Really? Yeah. Game's, game's, uh, game's selling up that much. No. Yep. Yep. Metroid's back, dude. Metroid's back. Oh man. I wanted a physical copy. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's just Am- I miss- it's just Amazon. You can get it somewhere else. I know, but I know, but it's like, damn. Like, can you imagine though, if I missed my window? No, you're gonna get a physical I- copy. You're, don't I know, worry. I know. Remember those days though, when like literally games would sell out, and they would like you'd have to wait a while to fucking get them back on stock. And yeah, everything? you still. Yeah, you Holy remember how shit. people waited like a fucking year to get a PS5, and they still can't. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, you know, something's got better about that. Something's mm. got worse. But we're done here, uh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Here's this plug. I'm on Fiverr. So if you wait, wait, uh, David, what I-, I wanted to at least get your like closing thoughts on everything as far as even just this movie and plus the future, maybe NCU that we may get. <laughs> Put Daisy in this film, you fucking cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my closing thoughts. I want Princess Luna. Oh, my God. A Super Mario Galaxy movie. You mean Rosalina? Rosalina. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah holy shit. <laughs> Yo, they're literally the stars of the limit for this fucking thing. Hey, they're, hey, they're going to be some surprise cameos. Maybe Charles Martinet is playing all the princesses. <laughs> God, can you imagine? It's like, oh, Mario. <laughs> Honestly, I agree. I, I'm not. We've already gone on too long, so I'm just going to yeah, go yeah. out on a limb here because it's already convenient enough. I agree with everything mm-hmm. you said. I would love like for this movie to be successful and more than anything to be good so there could actually be a Nintendo Cinematic Universe. That'd be too hype. That's something I would so appreciate in my adult years. You know, mm-hmm. something to, like, hold me back to my childhood a little bit more, but not hold me back in, like, the, you know, psycho- psychological sense, <laughs> but in, like, the nostalgic sense, where it's just, like, I've come full circle. Like, it would make me cry, mm-hmm. like, when Steve told me he was proud of me from Blue's Clues. Mm-hmm. Like that. So that's why I would mm-hmm. love to see something oh, like yeah. that. It would be, like, my life coming to, like, you know, fruition. You know what I mean? Because Mario's mm-hmm. always been such a huge part of my life, and now I'm an adult in the adult world now, and, uh... There it is. Now I, now I can, like, watch him on a... Now watch him on the big screen. He's aspired to that, like silver screen mm-hmm. golden golden you know craft of media that is mm-hmm. movies he's advanced from that to that and <laughs> hopefully it'll even put video games in a more positive light than they already are so mm. i think a lot of good could come from this movie if it's good so fucking god i hope it's good but i'm still it's it's not going to come out for over a year it's coming out in december of yeah. next year mm-hmm. and it's also again it's being made by illumination so i'm not getting my hopes up too much mm-hmm. that's another thing that i'm honestly very upset about but you know whatever cast mm-hmm. is insane you know, so, uh, I mean, mm. in, for better or for worse, the cast is insane. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've already talked about it enough. I, I agree with mm-hmm. pretty much everything Dennis said. That's my piece. I hope it's great uh, because of all the reasons I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, again, put Daisy in the film. Fucking cowards. I want to see uh, <laughs> maybe em- maybe Emma Stone. I think Emma Stone would be great as Daisy. I'd love to see that mm. or some other actress. Or Christina Hendricks. Which I don't think would be as good. Oh, of, I don't think would could, be as good of casting, no. but it would be as be, it would be better casting for my dick, but it would not be better casting for the movie. Christina Hendricks as Rosalina. Oh fuck, that's perfect. Mm. She's got like that sort of like, like oh, like that's so. Oh my god, she's sort of that like sort of like omnipotent like sexy voice to her. Yeah. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh my god, that's perfect. NCU, let's go. All right, well that's the NCU baby, and if you mm. want to see me. If you want, if you want good old <laughs> David to have any chance of one day being in the NCU, <laughs> purchase a gig from me on Fiverr, because that's where I'm at right now, freelance for voice work. If you think my voice sounds like a character that would be good for your project, or if there's a voice that you voice that you heard me do, or that you think that would be good in my voice or my inflections or whatever, I'm on there. You know, if you think I could fit the bill, I also do narration and commercial work and promo stuff and all that good stuff on there. Check it out. I'm, I work for, I not only work for cheap, but I can deliver a timely and quality product as well on top of that for crazy cheap. Seriously, you pay me five bucks, I'll say anything. So, you know what? If you want to do that and help me, like, build up my repertoire a little more, that would mean the world to me. I would love to actually be in the NCU one day. I think my life, <laughs> I think I could probably die. 
uh, if like had that happened to me, if I'm being completely honest, like that's like <laughs> that would be one of like the peaks of my life for sure. And uh, yeah, so there I am with that. The teaser poster is sick too, by the way, with the blood. Oh yeah, I did. I, I saw it before, and I was like, ooh, ooh. Nintendo knows exactly what they're doing. Ooh, I hope so. It's, and it makes, uh, me, makes me hard. And if you want to support us, uh, Dennis, we got a lot of podcast places they can listen to us as well as our social medias. Where can they do all that? Guys, you could find us on. Facebook and Twitter. You could also find us on Facebook. Uh, oh shit! Sorry, Facebook. yeah, that, that that started Facebook. In, uh, uh, almost the coup d'état of our country. <laughs> uh, we, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna change that to uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you could also find us on Spotify and several other podcast uh, platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and several others that we're gonna have affiliated down there below. Uh, please like and comment and subscribe to us if y'all think that an NCU is on the table because I truly feel as if if this movie takes off that it definitely gonna is and uh, also this is gonna be like a bit into the future but me and David we are gonna make a an episode strictly just for our thoughts on the movie when it comes out are way we later still, into the future are yes we, still- we are oh you're talking about when it comes out oh, yeah okay. yeah when okay. it comes out I was, like, about, yeah, I was about we, to say I'm like did we yeah. not is that not it's, what we just did? I'm like, we just no, did a whole no, podcast. No. About <laughs> but as far as when the movie after comes out. After we see like, it, yes. yes yeah, after, after we, we see it. it that's going to be our strictly like almost Yo. movie review type wait, of wait, wait, like, wait, 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 episode. Wait, 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 wait. I work for Nintendo again. Yeah. You think I could tickle some assholes to like maybe get like early access to the film? Dude, I think you're going to have to fondle Miyamoto's balls or something if you want to get into that movie early. You're, you're, it's pretty bold of you to assume that I didn't want to fondle his balls in the first place. He's also fairly old, man. <laughs> he's like 65. And he's impacted and changed my life in ways that I know, you couldn't I know, even fucking David, imagine. So, you David, know, them Japanese... What if, <laughs> David, though, what if, though, like, you went to, like, you know, he's like, Oh, David, yes, come in. I hear you talk about the, my balls of very much. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, he, you're like, yes, Miyamoto-san. Like, I, w- I really want to fondle your balls. And it's like, oh, yes, please, go ahead. And then like he drops his pants and like you're like just two inches away from like your nose touching his balls. And then you're like, <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> at least not like I actually, just suddenly like, remember this is another man's nutsack and I don't want to <laughs> do this. <laughs> and then uh, and you just hear my voice is like, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, what if his balls smell? <laughs> like, and you're like, I told you so. <laughs> it's just like. Hey, dude, what if his ball smell like way in the back of your head? And you're just like, fuck. What are we Dennis fucking Frank? talking about? It's like, God, fuck. He's like, oh, don't you. <laughs> God, oh, my God. This would be terrible. But it's like, what if Miyamoto becomes like Harvey Weinstein? Oh, I see you went to the pot in the NC. Oh, stop. <laughs> no. Oh, we're done. We're done. All right. Dennis already said it. Let, stay tuned for yeah. our probably like. Way into the 175th future. episode yeah. is what it would probably be at that point. Our movie review episode for Mar- Super Mario the movie. Yeah, stay tuned. Got Don't it. watch anything else until that because you need like the media. You need like your media brain to be fresh. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Don't so, watch anything else. Don't listen to anything else until that. So, so guys, that was our episode for today, and thank you for stopping by and taking a bit of your time to listen to two retards talking about a cinematic universe. That's like you know who knows if it's on the table, but yeah. Uh, yeah um, Thank you again, guys. Yeah. And uh, David, you may close us out for today. Daisy's better than Peach because she'll do shit that, like, <laughs> she'll, 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 she will do shit to you <laughs> that'll make you question everything about your life and you're going to like it. All right, we're done. Like, and uh, and I just imagined, like, you know that scene when like, Iron Man, like, snaps his fingers and, like, kills everybody? Like, Thanos and his entire army? So it's like, you know, if Mario, like, gets the Infinity Stones, it's like, and it's like, I... <laughs> I want, <laughs> I want, I want. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> like he just kills everybody. Bro, I want Daisy to fucking step on my throat, bro. Lights off. <laughs>